This week saw the release of a trailer for Marvel's Midnight Suns, an upcoming tactical RPG developed by Firaxis. If you browse YouTube, you can easily find the trailer as well as any number of channels giving you their reaction to the news. And while I certainly could have spared five minutes to make my own video filled with wide-eyed looks and faked amazement, I thought we would try something different. Because in addition to releasing the trailer, Firaxis had Jake Solomon, the creative lead for the game, conduct interviews with a number of media outlets. And I found that he tended to share different details with each outlet, so that by reading as many as I could, there was a surprising amount of info about a game that we haven't even seen gameplay footage from yet. There's a lot of ground to cover, so we'll break things down into a few obvious categories, then have a short discussion about the game as a whole, after which you can then react to it as you see fit. Rise of the Midnight Suns features a villain named Lilith, who's also referred to as the mother of all demons. Lilith has decided that Earth is ready for new management, and she is just the demon for the job. The Avengers and Doctor Strange join forces, along with Wolverine and some other heroes, to try and stop her. But at this point in the story, her plot armor is way too strong for even them to get through, and so their efforts are in vain. Next, they run into a group of supernatural anti-heroes that they reluctantly join forces with. I don't think it's explicitly stated, but it sounds as though this small group of a dozen heroes may be the only ones who manage to escape from Lilith. But knowing they need help, they take the somewhat extreme step of resurrecting Lilith's daughter, who was also a renowned demon hunter cleverly named, well, the Hunter. Finally, this somewhat motley crew takes refuge in a place known as the Abbey. This will be our combination home and headquarters, and it sounds like we'll be there at all times except when we're going out on missions. If you're wondering whether you'll be able to play as the Marvel superheroes themselves, then you may be surprised to hear that the answer is no, at least not for the most part. We'll be playing as the Hunter, who was created specifically for this game. We will work with the established heroes, make friends with them, braid each other's hair, and hold slumber parties, but they won't be our avatars in the game. That said, you will be able to control three of the Marvel heroes along with the Hunter during each combat mission. And that's it. That's the basic setup for the story of the game, so now let's go into more detail on a number of these areas, starting with combat. A couple of months ago, I reported a rumor that Firaxis was working on a game in the style of XCOM, but featuring Marvel superheroes. So the obvious question is this, are we getting an XCOM game, or at least XCOM combat, dressed up in a Marvel skin? And I won't be coy about it, the answer is no. No, we are not. There are some similarities, so let's start there. Our crew will spend time between missions at an HQ, and then we'll pick a squad of four to travel to missions where we'll engage in turn-based combat. And I do suspect that the combat map will mimic that basic XCOM style, but the differences we already know about are massive. First of all, there is no permadeath in this game. We can fail a mission and have to replay it, but we won't lose access to someone like Captain America or Iron Man just because we didn't play a particular mission quite as well as we should have. Beyond that, the creative director, Jake Solomon, literally said that there are, quote, zero mechanics shared between XCOM and the Midnight Suns. That's already a very strong statement, but he went on to say that you're doing these very large moves, these epic moves, and so the mechanics are just completely different. And this was a point he emphasized repeatedly. So it sounds like combat will not just have a different look, but will genuinely feel different as well. Where XCOM was about underpowered soldiers fighting against a superior enemy, the action here is meant to fulfill the superhero power fantasy. And while Lilith may be beyond our reach at first, her minions will actually fear us. We'll be interacting more with the environment, leaping off cars, pulling down light poles, and even kicking objects all the way across the map. And finally, combat was designed to reflect the frantic pace and energy of a superhero fight. Now, the most interesting part of this from my perspective is taking the idea that we'll be smashing multiple enemies with a single blow and doing things that make us feel powerful at an epic level, but how does that translate into a combat system that provides enough challenge to feel satisfying when you win? 
Are we going to fight in a type of horde mode for most of the game? Or do we start off against weaklings and then fight tougher enemies once we've had a chance to feel amazing? He did say that Lilith can corrupt anyone with a touch, and that includes the Marvel superheroes that aren't part of our roster. So it's very likely that we'll have some oh crap moments when someone like Thor or the Hulk shows up and we have to fight them. At any rate, I don't think that we'll just be swatting enemies like flies for the whole game, and it should be interesting to see what they've come up with. Meanwhile, let's go ahead and talk about the star of this show, The Hunter. The Hunter is an entirely new creation for Midnight Suns. She's an ancient warrior and Lilith's forsaken daughter. Perhaps more importantly, she's the only hero known to have ever defeated her. She's also the one character in Midnight Suns that will be fully customizable in both appearance and powers. There are over 40 different superpowers to choose from, and they're broken into broad categories of light and dark. The light powers are said to be along the lines of traditional superheroes, while the dark are in the mold of occult antiheroes like Ghost Rider and Blade. Now that doesn't mean that you'll have powers exactly like theirs. Instead, they've implied that the choice may have more to do with story consequences, and they drew comparisons to Mass Effect's approach of Paragon versus Renegade versions of Shepard. Her skills will improve as the game progresses, but this will happen in a way that you may not expect. In between missions, we'll have a chance to spend time with the other heroes at the Abbey. Some examples they gave are that Tony Stark might want to play cards, or Captain Marvel could spar with you. Spending time with someone in the Abbey or bringing them along on missions should improve your relationship. And somehow, cultivating those relationships will apparently shape your character progression. I wish I could go into more detail on that, but that's about all we know so far. The other heroes don't need to level up in the traditional way, but there is a costume upgrade that can also be unlocked by building a relationship with them, and this boosts their power level. Given that the trailer already shows costumes with runes on them, I think it's safe to say that there's magic involved with these new outfits, and that this will be part of getting our powers charged up to finally take down Lilith in the endgame. Okay, we're heading into the home stretch. Let's try to put all of these pieces together and talk briefly about what we might expect the game as a whole to feel like. I've seen a lot of comparisons to other games like XCOM and Mass Effect in a variety of articles, but what we're hearing so far reminds me most of Fire Emblem Three Houses. That game also features turn-based tactical combat, but the real focus of it arguably takes place in between missions. You make choices about who to spend time with and what activities to pursue, and building those relationships is a major part of the game. I'm certainly not saying that Midnight Suns is a clone of Fire Emblem, just that your attitude toward that game might be a good indicator of how much you enjoy this one. But of course, that doesn't allow for the fact that you'll have a chance to team up with a mix of genuinely iconic Marvel characters, as well as some who are more obscure. You know, we've already been told that because these guys don't all know each other, there are going to be some trust issues and friction along the way, and that should help keep things interesting without the need to force old friends to fight each other for no real reason other than to inject drama into the proceedings. And it's also nice to see Blade in particular here. He was the first Marvel character to have a hit movie, and after seeing him ignored for so long in the newer films, it's nice to see him get a bit of the spotlight again. Personally, I hope they got Wesley Snipes to do the voice, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. Thankfully, Firaxis are always good about announcing games and then quickly giving more concrete info, and we'll see some gameplay footage within just a couple of days of my recording this. As soon as I can break down the footage and analyze it, I'll link a video on the left of the screen, hopefully by the time you're watching this. And the game itself releases in March 2022 on literally every major platform, including the Switch. But not on Stadia because, you know, that's not a major platform. All right, thanks for watching. I hope we see you next time.